We're painting an abstract acrylic iPad wallpaper this week and we're doing it all in Procreate. I've popped a link to the two brush sets we'll be using along with the free color palette right in the video description. Let's get started. Since we're making a wallpaper in Procreate, make sure you're selecting screen size as your new canvas. Then hit the wrench, canvas category, crop and resize. In the upper right hand corner, tap on settings and then change your DPI to 300. That way, if you want to reuse this artwork in the future, you'll have it at a print resolution. Next, let's set our background color. So go into your layers, tap on background color, and we'll be using the first color in the top row. We're going to begin with our focal point of our abstract piece, which is going to be a little right of center. So on layer number one, I'm going to select the medium green color, head into the acrylic lovers brush set, the stamps category, and choose chunky stroke nine. We're going to rescale this and reposition it to that right of center location. And if we zoom in on this texture, you can see See how goopy and beautiful it looks. So we're going to keep layering in stamps now. So on the second layer, we're going to select the darkest color, head into your stamps again, and this time we're going to be using Chunky Stroke 15. We're going to rescale this and put it right on top of the previous one. Create a brand new layer, choose the third color on the bottom row, and this time we'll be using Chunky Strokes 16. Stamp it in. Once again, reposition it, rotate it, and pop it right on top of the other two. I'm going to move these down and to the right just a little bit. They're feeling kind of high to me. Create a brand new layer, and now we're going to work on our top pink border. So select the second color on the top row, and we're going to use Chunky Strokes 1. Tap it in. I'm going to rotate this around and have it crop right off at the top. I'm going to create a brand new layer and select the next colors, the third one in the top row, and this time I'm going to choose Chunky Stroke 17. I'm increasing the size a bit and I'm going to bring this right next to it up at the very top. And you'll notice that beautiful texture at the bottom, which we are definitely keeping. Create a brand new layer, select the next pink in a row, and we're going to grab Chunky Strokes 13. We'll stamp this one in right next to the previous one, and it's going to crop off the top right corner. And you'll see there's some really pretty transparency, which we will also want to keep on this. Create a brand new layer, and now we're going to add our focal point with this bright blue. I'm using Chunky Strokes 10 for this, scaling it down and popping it right in the middle. I want it close to the middle, but not directly in the middle. So I'm just moving things around a little bit to avoid that. We'll add in some supporting colors now, so create a brand new layer and grab the last color on the second row. I'm going to use overlay number eight for this. Even though it's an overlay, it still works really well as a stamp brush. So I'm going to pop that right on top of the previous color and then add one more with the first color on the bottom row using overlay number nine, and that's going to tuck right into the bottom right corner. Create a brand new layer and we're going to finish up our pink now. So second to the last color on the top row, I'm using Chunky Strokes 12 for this and it's just going to crop off the right side create a brand new layer, select the brightest pink, and this one we're going to use Messy Strokes 16. And this one's going to go right beneath the previous one and crop off the right side. Now it feels like something's missing on the left, so I'm going to add in a very subtle blue wash over here. So create a brand new layer at the very bottom, select the second color on the second row, and we're going to head into our washes, which will give it a little bit more of a mixed media feel. This is wash number eight, and I'm going to stamp this in a little bit to the left of the top lightest pink stamp. All of this looks good now, so before we move any further with blending all of our colors together, I'm going to create a duplicate of this. That way if I ever don't like what I smudge, I can always come back to my original. So I'm going to open up the duplicate now and we'll start our blending. So we'll be using our smudge brushes for this. The three smudge brushes I use the most are the Wet and Streaky, the Wet Bristles, and the Texturize. Let's start with the Wet Bristles first and we'll head into our focal point, this bright blue texture. And in order to use the smudge brush, you just want to start pulling the color. You can pull it and you can push it. As you're doing this, you just want to be aware of what the most interesting part of the stamp is, which is this little texture on the left. So I just want to make sure that I never smudge that area out because it'll give more character to my entire piece if that is left alone. So I'm just moving around the texture and making the edges a little bit more interesting. I'm grabbing the texturize brush and if I just stipple it in a couple of times and then switch back to my wet bristles brush, you can see I've got some nice transparency and just some more interesting textures going on. If I reduce the size of that texturized brush, you can see 
see, it kind of gives me like a wet sponge texture, which is pretty cool. So you've got a lot of flexibility with these brushes, whether you stipple them in or push and pull with them. So I'm just going to finish up creating some softer edges on this blue texture to blend a little more seamlessly with the surrounding textures. Next, we're going to move on to the kind of powder blue stamp right on top of it. So I'm going to select that in my layers palette. I'm just going to begin smudging on this one and you can see the most interesting part of this is this dry brush area. So I wanna make sure I do not smudge that part out. I'm going to switch to my wet and streaky so you can kind of see the difference here. This one's definitely more textured when you smudge with it. And because this stamp is already textured, it works really well to make it believable that it's just extending further up or further down to create those textures elsewhere. I'll bring in that texturized brush again, just stippling it to reduce the transparency in a few areas. And honestly, I just play around with this. I push and I pull constantly, trying to get just the look that I'm going for. So if you feel like you're smudging a ton, it's okay, I do that too. Let's move on to this big pink one up at the top. I don't think I have to really do much here, but I'm going to smudge out that white space that was up at the top, it's kind of bugging me. We'll move on to the next pink one. You can see we've got some gobs here that are really pretty, so I wanna make sure that I don't mess with those, but I do wanna extend this pink out a little bit further so I have less of a hard line between those two pinks up at the top. So now that they're softly blended, I wanna make sure that the blue that's on top of this pink color blends together with it just a little bit better. I wanna to avoid too many hard lines. I like some of them, but most of the times I like them blending together in a kind of a soft but streaky way. Next, we'll move on to this kind of bubblegum pink color on the right side, and I'm just calling out the interesting parts of this. So I always kind of give myself a mental note of what to avoid when I'm smudging, that way I don't get too carried away. So I'll smudge the edges of this one just like I did the others, just making those colors interact a little bit better, become more harmonious, make it look more realistic that way as well. Now that that's complete, let's move on to the bright pink color. That bottom edge is just so beautifully textured, so I wanna avoid smudging that part, but I'll continue smudging it and having it blend a little bit better with the color right underneath it. And now that I have this pink here, I'm feeling like I need a little bit of pink in the upper left corner to give myself a little asymmetry since it's another bright color. I feel like it'll balance out how dominant the blue is a little bit. So for this one, I'm going to actually paint in the texture. So I'm going to head into the Acrylic Lovers Painting category and I'm going to grab the Wet Bristles brush, the same brush that we were using to smudge with. And you can paint with this. It's actually really fun to paint with because you can get a lot of different textures and transparencies depending on how much pressure you put on the brush. So you can push the paint around as you're actually painting. And then I like adding on the smudge brush on top of that just to add in even more character than it already has and kind of make it blend with the vibe that I've got going throughout the rest of the piece. I'm also noticing that I have this bright teal color that I want to have continue on to the left side of the blue. So I'm just color sampling that and on a new layer up at the top I'm going to paint it in in the same exact way I just did the pink, only I'm just adding some more color in here, but I wanna make sure it's retaining the same type of texture and blending qualities that I have throughout everything else. So I'm following those same steps. I'm painting it in and then I'm adding texture with a smudge brush by just pushing and pulling. I have quite a few overlaps on this blue and I want this one to go behind the blue. So I'm going to go into my layers palette and just drag this layer underneath the blue layer, that way I don't have to worry about that. And then I can continue smudging and getting it just the way that I like it. This blue ended up feeling really dominant, so I'm going to create a brand new layer at the very top. I color sampled the blue, and I'm just going to put a couple of marks on it to make the entire piece feel a little bit more interesting and to balance out this giant blob of blue that I kind of have almost directly in the center. So it'll feel more off-center by adding just a few dots here. So I really like how that feels. I'm also looking at my pink areas, and I'm thinking I can add a little pink to the bottom. I love pink, so let's add some pink to the bottom, and we'll blend it out the exact same way. And now we've got pink touching all four sides, so it does create a, a really nice sense of balance here. I noticed I had a little white area in the bottom right corner. I don't like that, so I'm just going to smudge out this teal color to finish that off. All of this feels really good, so now I want to add a paint streak overlay. In order to do this, you'll need black, so in your disk view, double tap where black is to get true black. You'll want to go into the Acrylic Lover Stamps category, and for this one, I'll be using overlay number five. It's my favorite one, but it is a vertical one, so I always like turning my canvas. You'll want it at full size and just tap it in with your finger, and then you can rotate your canvas back 
On that layer, you'll want to change your blend mode to overlay and then reduce your opacity. I like an opacity of 50%. That feels like a really nice balance for me. And you can see those gorgeous paint streaks all throughout and it just makes it feel so real once you add in that overlay. There's nine different overlays to choose from, so you can play around with the different ones and find one that you like. We could stop right here, but I wanna add a calendar to my wallpaper. So I'm going to do this right beneath the overlay layer and it's gonna go in that bottom left corner. There's a perfect opportunity to place it there. Because this layer is beneath our overlay, we're going to get those pretty brush strokes on top of our calendar too. Let's begin by adding our calendar blocks. So I'm going to use the second color on the top row for this. Head into the calendar kit. I'm going to grab the standard blocks brush, create a brand new layer. Now we're going to add in the dates. I'm going to grab the darkest color for this. And for the dates, I'm going to make it for next month. So next month is February. It starts on a Thursday. So I'm grabbing the standard 05 brush. And the important thing to know here is that all all these brushes are the same size so they work perfectly together. Now I need to add in my weekday abbreviations and once again this brush is the same size as the previous two brushes, makes everything work perfectly together. I want to reduce the opacity of the blocks to 50%, it was feeling kind of strong. Now I can group these layers together and scale them down and place them right where I want them to go. I just realized that because this is for the month of February, I need to get rid of the 30th and 31st because this year is a leap year. So I'm going to just grab my eraser and I can just erase those away. Next, our calendar needs a title. So I'm going to grab the brightest pink color and grab the February stamp and stamp it right above my calendar. And that feels like a good size and I'm going to place it flush left. It's feeling still a little too big, so I'm just rescaling it, repositioning it, getting it exactly as I like it. And I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply on the blocks and reduce the opacity to 30% so it blends in with the background a bit better. And there we go. Our iPad wallpaper is complete.